Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today we're going to talk about quarantine and the fish you're seeing on the screen right now, which are rummy nose tetra. They're being quarantined for the 800 gallon. Spoiler alert, yes, we're doing a giant school of rummy nose tetras in the 800 gallon. But what I want to talk about today is these groups that I have, uh, what size tank they're in, how quarantine went, and all of that. We rewind like a month or so at this point. These two tanks were completely drained down. We installed the new backgrounds at the same time, same day, within an hour. You know, we siliconed them both in. Uh, everything about them is identical. They got filled up with water within the same hour. Filtration went in, everything went in, right? The difference is we can see is this has one plant and this one has two plants okay but for a hobbyist level experiment this was as close to it as i could get so what did we do we ordered 600 rummy nose tetras and that's what you see here 600 is what we ordered they came in from a supplier and we roughly after quarantine got them to be i estimate somewhere between we lost about 50. i didn't count I didn't count them when I unbagged them. I haven't counted them now. I haven't put them in a tank and I probably will never count them because that's a lot of time wasted counting tetras. These guys did pretty darn good. You know, we're still going through quarantine here. There's still some that have a little bit of work that needs to go on. We're still, you know, hatching out live baby brine. We're feeding them well. We're getting them big and, and they're a little bit stressed right now because I uh, just used the magnet cleaner to get the algae off the glass. You know, they went into a cycle tank with cycled substrate and they did well okay the problem is this tank identical also ordered 600 fish you're gonna go wait a second there's not nearly as many fish right if we look over there again tons over here there's like maybe a couple hundred maybe and they're still struggling a little bit well what happened with these guys these ones came in and there were massive casualties in the bag. What does that mean? That means that like at least half of them were already dead in the bag, not doing well, ammonia burn, gill burn, all of that. Same source, same vendor. They came in one week later. I thought, you know, let's make sure that 600 rummy nose will do okay in one of these. They did. We put 600 in. They did well. I said, hey, those did so great. Wow, look at those. They're doing so good. Let's order another 600 because I want a thousand of them to be in the 800 gallon. We pan over here. Now, not so good. But I want to use this uh, lesson here. So they got the same exact meds, same exact tank. It's on automatic water change. So the water changes are the exact same. Uh, the food, exact same. Everything was done to be the exact same minus one week difference. And what I want to point out is that can be what the difference is even for your local fish store or someone shipping you fish or whatever there was a week difference and maybe when because i they came into a trans shipper so they came into california before they came to washington the temperature was was different and maybe you just had a few weaker tetras and they started a chain reaction dying in the bags and that type of stuff it's not always like is my store good or bad you can have the same exact scenario and get radically different results based on things that are out of someone's control. And so you could say like, well, you know, you should, you should know you shouldn't order. Like it was one week difference and you have to order at least a week in advance. You can't know what the weather exactly is going to do. You might hear some squirting sound. The water change just turned on. So I can show you how that works down here in the turtle tank. Actually, the water has turned on all these 125s change water at the same time. So they're all doing that right now and the water will leave the system. So that's how you know, or I know that all the water changes are equal. I've measured them before and they are equal. So yeah, I'm really excited to add these to the 800 gallon though. Once they finish their quarantine, I've got a couple of rounds of general cure to go. Um, and I've got some, you know, I want to clear up some of these issues in the body. Let's see that guy right there. It's got like a, a growth on the inside or a tumor or something like that. And there's a couple of them over here that have that. I'm not sure that I've ever been able to clear that up, but I want to make sure that um, like that guy in the back there has got it. I want to make sure that those are stable and I don't put them in the, the 800 gallon. I keep them in quarantine. 
I use the quarantine trio, by the way. So Ikex, General Cure, or not General Cure, but uh, Paracleanse and Erythromycin. You can see the water's a little murky from, you know, meds and, and uh, scrubbing down so I can make the video because algae is not a bad thing, but when you're trying to video it is. Plants are moving forward, which is good. And uh, so now I have what's going to happen. I'm going to take these, and this is, so it's all a, a calculated risk, right? So we've got group doing really, really well over there. Group not doing as well, like still lost one today. You know, and one out of that many is not horrible, but we're only about three weeks, maybe two, two weeks from quarantine, three weeks on that one, right? So we're coming up on the four weeks on that on Monday, which is a Saturday right now, and this is at three weeks. I know I have more fish coming in on Tuesday. So my plan is to move these and mix them with these. And yes, could they all get sick and all die? Yes. But if I know they're all going to the 800 gallon, uh, I need to do that mix anyway. So we're going to mix these in over here. I believe there's enough room. There's no ammonia problems or anything like that. I think that'll be okay. And the next batch of 600 will go here into quarantine. We are hoping for a much better version like that one where they come in nice and healthy and not this. Like some people go, isn't that horrible? You lost a bunch of fish. Yes, it is horrible. No one wants to see that. Uh, another question we'll get is, do you get refunded for those? And the answer is sometimes if I raised uh, a big issue with the, the trans shipper, they probably would have. But then in general, you're not building a good relationship. So I try not to because on average, the fish come in really good. Most times they're like that. Now, if the next batch comes in like this, I'm going to be asking for something. And I did tell him when I ordered this next batch, I go, hey, first batch came in great, looking really good, love that. Or another batch, mm, not so good, you know, so let's, let's try and make sure we're making sure we don't replicate anything. If you had a new guy packing or if it was extra hot or you were extra delayed or anything, like I couldn't see anything on my end, but maybe they know something I don't. And then, you know, hopefully they'll come in good. And now I'll have the thousand or more. Well, now it'll be more, you know, it'll be more like probably, you know, 12 or 1300, I would hope, uh, going into the 800 gallon. I'm going to chime in at the 800 gallon, give you guys a little sneak peek on what these guys are going to go to. All right. So here's the 800 gallon still working on it. Just got planted two days ago. Want it to grow in, want it to be nice and, and well established before we bring in the Rummy Nose Tetras. So we've got the crinums that have always lived in here. I split them into two. I put some Anubias in on these fake pieces of decor. And then Valisneri in the back. I expect that to kind of melt down. And then for it to come back long term, nice and long like we had with the clown loaches and tiger barbs. And then over here, I've made a crypt garden. This is crypt uh, when dead I red. So it'll be kind of a nice base all the way around there. And so the planning here is that we want it so that the fish can swim around these bigger decorations, you know. And so if you haven't seen the 800 gallon or don't know the stats, this tank is eight feet long and uh, 40 inches tall, right? Is that right? Yeah, I think so. And so like this decoration here is like 48 inches tall, comes out of the tank still. But you see, we've mostly left the front half, at least the front two feet at the corners, and then more in the center open. That's because Ladybird, my babu puffer from my living room, is going to move in here with the rummy nose. I've got a group of rummy nose that we took from that uh, good looking batch, living with Ladybird right now, just to make sure that she didn't, uh, you know, eat them or anything, even though she's been with other fish before. How bad would that look on camera of like, look, it's a thousand rummy nose. Oh my God, she ate them all. So that's where we're at with this. Yes, we had to get in the tank uh, to plant it and that kind of stuff. It, it's a lot of work and it's slow and steady and we're not trying to race it. We want it to look good long term. I want to enjoy this. And uh, yeah, we, you know, so obviously we put the background in. If you're following for a long time, you know, the background went in and then also over here, you know, we had to, we covered the overflows, not an absolute perfect fit. We've gone through a little bit of uh, fine tuning, if you will, and there's still more fine tuning to be done. But once the plants grow in and uh, I want to get some, a few minor changes made to the sump that's down below, nothing major, no major overhauls, just a little bit of tweaks. 
and it's looking really good though. It's running silent, which I like. Oh yeah, I forgot. We put in a spray bar. So we have the water flow now jettisons across the tank and it, it kind of whips back. And so that's why you see the plants here. They're actually waving in this direction because of the water flow hitting that wall and coming back. So we get this nice circular motion of, let me step back here. It's hard to get all the tank on camera, but water comes up over down around in this sweeping pattern. Now I'm hoping the rummy nose are going to do something like that as well. It'll look great on camera. I'll enjoy it. And, uh, I think it'll be a good display. I haven't seen anyone do a giant school of rummy nose like this in a very long time. The only thing I found online were very pixelated videos. I'm, I'm not saying I'm the only one to do it. I'm sure a hundred thousand people, have, well, not a hundred thousand, but like a thousand people have done this around the world and pet stores and all that. I haven't seen it done in the flesh and I think it's going to look super cool. It already looks cool in the 125. So I'm stoked for it. And I'm eager to bring it to you guys as well because you guys get to enjoy it as well as much as I do. I'm going to, you know, I can't imagine feeding it and, and just seeing what's going to happen. And, you know, all the clam shells are going to build up from Ladybird, you know, eating clams. And I think it'll be real enjoyable. So that's just my little quarantine story with the rummy nose. Yes, a thousand of them or more are going in here. I think it'll be amazing. I hope you guys are excited and Probably, you know, in a few videos from now, you'll see that happen. Slow and steady. I'm not trying to race this. Don't want to jeopardize a bunch of fish's lives so I don't have to. Time is on our side. We're in the middle of summer, and we got time. So have a good day. Enjoy your tanks, and we'll see you next time.